This is a presentation of WCTV, all volunteer community access television from the Township of Washington. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Exit 168, WCTV, the all-volunteer access group from the Township of Washington's weekly variety mm -hmm. show. And tonight, John Frank Hall and I are going to bring you a very special <clears throat> show. And John, last May, we had the privilege of having as a guest, uh, we were with them all day, the Bergen Catholic Golf Team who came to the studio and uh, told a story that they were going to go <clears throat> in early July <clears throat> to Scotland in a tournament. And we got a call from the head coach, Jake Jacobson, and he said, you can't believe how well we did. And what did we say? Come on back. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe them. I remember just talking with them all, and they were so excited. You and I should have carried their bags. And, and gone with them. John, they wouldn't let us near that plane <laughs> get I wasn't going to play. I just watch them. Well, as you see now, we have a wide <laughs> shot of the group here. We have part of this uh, this team that went out to Scotland, led by Coach Jake. And uh, we'll talk to you a few seconds, and I want you to introduce everyone here. <clears throat> okay. um, last time we saw you, you were sitting there. You were getting ready to go to Scotland. And tell us what happened when you got to Scotland and how the tournament went. When we first got there, they didn't have a bus big enough to take us, and we had to put all the uh, clubs and luggage in the back of the bus, and we were off to a rough start. There was campus and got to the Russell Apartments, and we got set up and we got in. Uh, we had to pick a name for the team, so we brought two teams. So the first team was obvious. We picked the Crusaders. That was our nickname. And the second team, uh, the people who were running the tournament were very happy with our decision. We called our second team the Jersey Boys. It's kind of just <laughs> fit in great, right? And uh, we had our school colors on for several times that we played. And at the end of the tournament, they gave us, all of us, blue shirts and took a lot of pictures with the blue shirts. But unbeknownst to me, these guys are unbelievable. They were prepped and prepared. And they went on the internet. They studied these golf courses. They knew when to bounce the ball in. They were looking at wind patterns. I didn't really have to do much. I, I kind of <laughs> just showed up and I played behind them. And uh, Coach Mike and uh, Coach Pete were with us. And uh, we got the privilege on the very first day of teeing off on the first hole in front of about 55, 60 people. And um, I went first and hit it down the middle, and Mike hit it a little past me down the middle, and Pete hit it a little past me down the middle. And I can't tell you what we did the rest of the day, but that was a big thrill because we all got it down the middle, and everyone thought we were good golfers. That, that, which that was great. first shot, the was first shot was so great. The first some shot. elevated tee on the balcony, and some of the pictures that we'll see later were actually uh, depict how we hit down uh, from uh, above. And the kids just went about their business. They were actually on a vacation, yet they covered the tournament when we played as a tournament. It was a mix of, of two of the nicest So how many, uh, how many teams were involved in this tournament? That's eight. Eight teams eight, from? All, all from the United States. All from the United States, and that was at the St. Andrews Golf Right in that area. In that area is uh, Crail, uh, Kings Barnes, 
the Castle Course, the Fairmont St. Andrews, and then right in town is the Old Course, the New Course, the Jubilee, the Eden, mm. the Stratton, and the kids just had the full Monty. They got and how long play. were you there? You, I know you we went June 28th and came home July 5th, and the greatest thrill was they all got up early in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, they were online, all 16 <clears> golfers in bags uh, to play the Old Course, and every single one of them got out. Very they all good. played the old course. So you had eight teams, and, and then how did you fare with the... Uh... Well, uh, the, the Jersey boys didn't fare as well. They came towards the end of the pack, but they had just as good a time. And we were very fortunate. Uh, the team won, and uh, Jimmy uh, <coughs> Cushone, he won the whole tournament with a 70, 72, 74. Mm. So he had a 216, <laughs> and we had an 893, which is like a college score. We had a, a 290, a 300, a 303. And um, we won by a whopping 46 strokes. So it, was, it was just a great, great trip. Now, we're going to show this, uh, this trophy you got, this jug, and there's all kinds of writing on it. And I'd like you to tell the people exactly what's on this and why is it so important uh, that this is here and what did it really mean? Okay. Uh, for the, uh, we call it the British Open, the people over there call it the Open, they give the claret jug. And this is an actual replica of the claret jug. And when Jimmy won his and the team won ours, it's in the Scores Hotel to the right of the 18th uh, green, and it's there forever mm -hmm. with all of their names etched on it. And we, we got a replica made up, and on the front says uh, American Golf at St. Andrews Championship, and it puts all the kids who played. And then on the other side, we put the Jersey team, which <coughs> is uh, Pete and Mike ran that team, and names of all the players there. And then on this side, we put um, what courses we played. We played the Crail, which was the Balcomy course, and then we played the Kiddicks course at Fairmont St. Andrews, and then we played the Torrance course at the Fairmont St. Andrews. And I thought this would show everything that we did over there. It's not a really big uh, claret jug, but it means an awful lot. It sits in the trophy cabinet up at school. How much bigger is the actual one? Not much. Not much. Not but much. this is beautiful. Oh, really? And this is this is sterling silver. I mean, this is the this was an expensive replica <laughs> that we got, but it was worth it. Yeah. Um, would you like to introduce? <clears throat> rotate. Oh, oh, they want you to rotate it. Okay. T turn it around more, more, more. more. I'm gonna face this camera right here. Turn once more. Right okay. here. Tur once one, one more. Once more. There you go. That's it. Bergen Cat. Leave it right there. Just like that. There you go. They were, there you go. That's it. The Bergen Cat, the Crusaders, and it gives you the courses, what you were talking about. Right. You were facing it your side, so we can see Crail and Fairmount and St. Andrew Torrance. And when we we'll bring it around, then we bring it around one more time. Right. John, you turn. Right. You're yeah. closer. Let's do this. There we go. And, and there's the state championship. That's the players that won. That would uh, be the six more. players. Two of, no. them have, two of them have graduated, and one of them is going down to Florida, so only three of them are coming back. But... Uh, we have other guys to fill in. We feel we're going to be uh, pretty Very good nice. next year. One more twist. One more turn, John. And all then right. we get the... Uh, the just, all the courses. Just the, all the way. The, just the Jersey That's Boy a, team. The Jersey That's Boy. That's the Jersey Boy team. There you go. With the two coaches' <laughs> names on it, Pete and Mike. So we got, we got everything that people right. could see. Well, what we thought is we all went there. We had two teams of six. That was 12. We had four parents, three coaches. We had 19 total people. And uh, they all were part of the, the whole trip. Everyone had a special... Real good time. I okay, so you could do us a, do us a big favor today, because you're usually like a co-host here. Can you introduce? <laughs> we we know host. some of them. The two coaches. Start with the two coaches, and okay. then our our players. This is uh, Pete Coleman. This is Jimmy Cushone. This is Drake Ferreira. This is BK, as we call him. It's Brendan Kim. This is Mike Anyashuk, who played for me in 2004. So he must have had a big thrill coming back and coaching with me. And uh, they just uh, they played so great that they made every, everyone look good. And other teams mm. and other people and parents were questioning. They thought that we had picked an all-star team from all over the eastern seaboard and put it together. And I said, well, it is kind of an all-star team, but it's all the one mm. school. We're all Bergen Catholic that. students. And so, uh, so basically, you, you, you won almost everything you went when you were there. Yeah, Jimmy won. And Jimmy won. The, and, and, and the team won and Jimmy won. We couldn't win anything else. Well, that's, Almost anything. You know. But let's start talking. We'll give the microphone <coughs> to our coach here. And uh, your name? Uh, coach P. Coleman. Right. So your, uh, your feelings and your 
what you took away from this from this trip how to be spectacular huh? it, it was a trip of a lifetime you know we, we packed for cold weather and rain and you know you'll see in the pictures later we had gorgeous weather uh, the <coughs> kids were amazing we all got to play you know the coaches uh, and you know could have been any better loved it we are still talking about it so, uh, let's talk to coach we have it to coach Mike then we'll talk to the youngsters here with the actual plays again your uh, your a feelings former player, a former yeah. player right yeah a former player of uh, the coach yeah, it was an excellent opportunity not only to uh, you know to, to play for Jake, but then come around again and coach with Jake and get to go on uh, such an incredible uh, trip. I mean, it was really truly the trip of a lifetime and uh, something you'll never forget. I mean, you could every day, every minute, you know, we uh, we talk about all the memories and you know just something that'll always be there. So I, you know, it was just great to be a part. Like I said, uh, still working with Jake. Now I know him for 14 years and. Uh, it's amazing to be back again as a coach. So I love being part of it, and it was just a great trip. It's got to be something for a, a, go a, a true lover of golf, one who embraces the sport, to get a chance to go out to Scotland. Because I would say 95% of the people who are playing in this country never get a chance, get a chance right. to go out there, maybe to go and watch it, and maybe 1% of that 5% would actually play the course. Right. It's a bucket list item for all golfers. You know, right. Pebble Beach, <laughs> or maybe Augusta. When you talk about the old course, they were so dedicated. These kids wanted to play it, and they had a lottery. And we didn't get in the lottery, except for maybe George and uh, Kyle Roberts and Brendan got in the lottery, but the rest of us didn't. Now, I was in charge of the Jubilee course that morning. I was running back and forth. I had already played the old course. But to get up on July 4th morning at 2 o'clock and to take cabs down and to get lined up and to play down there, Mike played, Pete played, everyone played. Every single kid got to play on July 4th at St. Andrews, that's all they talked about. It. And then next year when they play the Open there, BK's going to tell you where he hit the ball here and he hit it there and Jimmy did this. And these guys broke uh, 75. What did you shoot, Jim? You shot? Uh, 70, 72. Oh, so, let's give, let's give so Jim. Well, that was on the St. Andrews. What did you shoot at St. Andrews? St. Andrews, I shot 73. And, and BK, what did you shoot? 71. And, and Drake? Uh, 76. And Drake's father birdied <laughs> the 18th hole two days prior and Drake birdied the 18th hole Beautiful. on the last day. So they, they got a flag made up, and his dad signed it, Drake signed it, and they got their picture taken. So not only did both of them birdie the last hole, but on two different days at St. Andrews. I mean, I think you talk about that for a long time, right, Drake? Oh, yeah, yeah we just So let me ask you, start with you, Jen. We'll give you a microphone so you can, you can talk. When you got out there to play and you got up on the tee, was it like every golf course because you, you, you focus so much on golf or did you take in the event that this is St. Andrews and where you were? Did you pay attention to where you were or you just playing golf? Um, yeah, I, it was like hard to believe that I was playing in St. Andrews where all like, you know, legends <laughs> were born and where they played and it was just an amazing experience and I was just really excited to play on that course. And, you know. At what point, I've always, I've asked a lot of players, at what point did you realize yourself you weren't thinking you were playing at St. Andrews, you were playing a golf tournament? Um, well, in golf, you know, you, you have to stay in the moment and focus, um, you know, at, on your shots and what type of shots you're playing. And in St. Andrews, in Scotland, you have to be creative. So I think that also helped my golf team, too, because you were thinking about the shots and not, like, the score or something. You were playing a golf course and, you know, just try to... Uh, play the best you can. Yeah, what I'm trying to say, you're so concentrated on what you're doing. You don't, you, you don't say, gee, I'm at St. Andrews, let that envelop you. You're worrying about the next shot or the hole or the, or the wind coming or whatever you got to worry about. That, that's what I'm trying to get at. You were more concentrated than anything else, right? Yeah, um, yeah you, pre pretty much. you listen to what he said? Yeah. Very important. This could help your game. <laughs> would you like to help him? Yes, See, I'd, I I'd love like to. I don't have the temperament. You know, you know how you could help my game? You hit for me. That's about as much. You know, you, you make believe. Did you I mean, hear all those words that he put together before he grabbed the club and you go to But you know what's, what's great is when we first got there, the first day on <clears> Sunday, St. Andrews is closed. Uh, they got to give it a little bit of a break. There's so much playing time. We won that little mini tour. We went around those yeah. four holes, and that's when they really they made up their mind. We're playing this course. We're not going home unless we play this golf course. Yeah. They Once were really life. set. Oh. And just looking at the road bunker and the hotel and going over things, uh, uh, they were very nice to me, the people that ran this tour. They let me give the tour uh, of these four or five holes. And we started out with 19 of us, 
And when people, when we finished the tournament, we had like 55 people following, <laughs> listening to us talk about, you know, the different parts of, of the golf course. And you could see their eyes just light up. They were ready. You they think you'd ever go back? Uh, hopefully, in as a, uh, as a, pro? a few years, as a pro. <laughs> as a pro. Yeah. Yeah, I remember him. <laughs> Why don't you give the microphone back to him? Give us your name. It's look into that, mic that camera right there. Uh, Drake Ferreter. Uh, you, same thing, Jake. Uh, when you were, were playing, uh, any emotion uh, when you walked up to that hole and the first time you had to swing a club mm. there? Well, I got up there and I was like, like, what do I do? I was like, I didn't know if I should hit it like a normal shot, hit it lower, because I always see when I watch the open, like they're all trying to hit these like tiger stingers and all that stuff. And I just got up there and kind of hit it. And it, we were fortunate enough to have good weather and it wasn't so windy on a couple of the days until like the last couple of days. So it was almost like normal golf besides the fact that like the greens were like 10 times the size and the bunkers were like 10 <laughs> feet deeper. I saw that we're gonna see a picture yeah. of that bunker. Looks right. like somebody had a bomb and yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, right. I had some. Some how do you get, how do you get out of those bunkers? Don't get in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a dumb question. You wait for that one. You wait for that soft ball to whack it out. Gosh, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let's get the uh, Ryan. Well, how about you? You're, you're an old pro here. Uh, your feelings at the, going out to uh, Scotland and playing and standing uh, there, were you caught up in the moment or total concentration on what you have to do when you didn't realize where you were? Uh, to be honest, it was kind of both. Uh, I was, uh, honestly, I spent like probably three days, a couple days just spent like uh, studying the old course and I wanted to play well because I knew I'd probably, it, I'd only get so many chances to play there. But at the same time, on the first tee especially, I kind of got caught up in the moment thinking about all the players that's, uh, that has played on, on that course and on that first tee. To be honest, I had like a little moment for about like five seconds where I like pretend I was Tiger. It's kind of depressing to be honest, but you know. <laughs> I thought I was a pro for a second until I realized, all right, I got to calm down here, hit this tee shot, and thank God I hit it down the middle. You know, after one even one show here in May, you look oh, like a professional. You talk very nicely. You thank yourself you. Very thank you. well. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you want to be our golf analyst. You can follow us around. <laughs> doing I golf wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, I wouldn't be too bad. It would take about eight hours to finish the course the way we play. <laughs> it's all good. We, I, see I the whole, we see the whole course. There's nothing we miss on a course. We're all over the place. It's, it's your money's worth, right? You ever think you get back there? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, even whether it be as a pro, you know, or any, any, and even if I get older, it doesn't really matter to you. But uh, I just want to go there just for the experience again you know, with my family, with friends. It doesn't really matter. I just want to have that, uh, that feeling again of playing that course. Jake, do they, uh, are you allowed to go there and sign up to play, or you have to be invited to get on those courses? Well, to get on the old course, uh, it's a year out, meaning that if you get in the lottery and you don't get in, when you get there, you actually have to wait online. Uh, it's the hardest course to get on, but once you get on, you're, you're right there. So by doing what they did, getting there at 2 in the morning, they don't open until about 5, 5.30, and the first tee time was 6.30. And I think Rick Bellini and Jimmy went out in the very first group with two people that showed up and two other people didn't. And then you skip a group, and then the next two guys go out and another guy. And so if you're patient, and they had a plan, they actually sat down the night before, they had a meeting, we had a little conference room, and they said, this is what we're gonna do. We're getting three cabs, we're getting down there. It was cold in the morning, right guys? You guys had hoodies on, and, they oh, were, yeah, and I'm sleeping. Cold, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm sleeping because I, I've already played there and I knew the excitement would be fine, and Mike and Pete were down there. I got down there just when you were finishing on the 18th, and I got pictures of Jimmy, and then more and more, and then we had to slide over uh, Pete and some of the others, Drake and his dad, they went and played the Jubilee with me, which is just a great golf course right next to the old course. But it's hard to get on. It's uh, you got to be a little lucky, a little patient, and they figured out what to do. Now you sent us some pictures that you took. I think you took a couple of hundred, probably. We and, did, we did. And you, and you I, took your you, best. You, you told me to pick twenty-five. And twenty-five, I, I picked, and you I picked hundred. I tried to put myself in as many as I could. <laughs> <laughs> But they were, they were all from my computer and my iPhone, but from everyone's iPhones and from everyone's camera, I think every one of us has at least 100 pictures that oh, yeah. we took. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I thought these would be the ones that you would like. Okay, let's see if they could, the control room can get that up and we'll start going through these pictures. Now, you'll take, do you take over and you talk about each one of which, them? Go ahead. Which screen do you want me to look at? Uh, right, you can look right down here. Yeah, well, just, this is the uh, a picture, that was the team. Well, go back again, we'll just go get back. back to that. That's, uh, the picture of the team uh, taken at Emerson Golf Course, <clears throat> and uh, you're looking at Crail right now. That's the stone wall. But if you want to go back, I don't know if you I don't can. Know if they can go back. <laughs> well, 
I just keep calling. This is the Crail Golf Course. This is the balcony, and that's uh, Peter, Michael, and myself. And that's a very famous hole. This is all the uh, 12 players on the Swilkin Bridge. That's the Royal and Ancient Clubhouse in the background. Uh, that was a great picture. We've, we must have taken about five or six. Those are the three coaches uh, on the Swilkin Bridge, very famous bridge. It's where Nicholas and uh, Palmer wave goodbye, and Tom Watson, and we're, we're waving hello. That's the Royal and Ancient Clubhouse, and that's, again, all 12 players that uh, participated with all the coaches. Uh, <coughs> Royal and Ancient is now voted to let women in. This is a, a stone wall you have to hit over <coughs> at the, uh, that might have been the Craig's course. We played that first, and then the balcony. There were stone walls all over the place, double greens, pot bunkers. And this is what Scotland looks like. That's the first or fourth out in the distance, and that dictates the wind. That's where everything happens, but there's no trees. As Jimmy said, you've got to be very creative. You bounce the ball sometimes. Sometimes you fly it right out to the left, knowing the wind's going to blow it to the, to the right. Uh, actually, on the greens, occasionally, the wind's blowing hard enough that you've got to get yourself steady. And that's looking out over the balcony course right now. That's probably the 18th, the 16th, and the 17th, and we had a great view. Uh, again, another picture of the Royal and Ancient Clubhouse, uh, probably the most famous building in all of Scotland. Uh, everyone knows the RNA, as they call it. So that's me. I had a goatee at yeah. that time. I'm clean shaven now. That was the Kiddicks course. That was the, um, about the 13th or 14th hole, and you go over that. You end up in the uh, first or fourth. Look at that bunker. This is King's Barnes <laughs> with a bunker. And that's a two-tier green. They, one day we played, the pin was up on the top right. Second day we played, the pin was on the bottom. This is the 16th hole at King's Barnes. <laughs> that. uh, it's a par three. You have to hit over all those rocks and get up to the, to the far right. Uh, just about everybody uh, played very well there. Uh, that's uh, a bunker at the Torrance course. That's the Fairmont Hotel in the background. And that's a sod bunker with all that sod. A mason comes every three or four years. That's uh, Jimmy and I. That's the claret jug that they gave us that now sits at the Scores Hotel to the right of the old course. And uh, Jimmy has his at home. And the other one we had made up, as you've seen, uh, we have that in uh, the school. There's the coaches with the claret jug. Those are the blue shirts that they gave us. We wanted to wear Bergen Catholic red, but they mandated that. And that's me up on the Swilkin Bridge. That's the Scores Hotel to the right, that big brown building. People think that's the old hotel. It's not. You have to actually hit over the old hotel. <laughs> These are our scores that were just terrific. There's two 81s there, and everything else was 78 or less, with Jimmy going 70, 72, 74. And everyone contributed at one particular time to help the team uh, be successful. Um, everyone picked the name. We had uh, the Jersey Boys and we had the Crusaders. There's Jimmy again holding both trophies. He actually had the trophy packed in a suitcase in the bus and uh, the <laughs> committee came out and said, hey, where's the claret jug? And it was in the bus. There's another great picture. The guy in the kilt was a golf pro that ran the tournament with the rules and regulations and he was uh, just a great guy and he talked to everybody. That's the Scores Hotel with the Alexander Restaurant. That's where we ate. Uh, Mike, you were a little late. You didn't make it in the picture, but we couldn't wait forever. Uh, Mike had to take power naps. Now we're back to the, uh, the original shot. Right. That's all the trophies that we won. We won six trophies. We got three in the front, three in the back. And um, we won uh, the league, the conference, the county, the non-public A state, the state championship, the tournament of champs, which is six patches as we talked about in our last show. Right. And Scotland doesn't count, but it counted for us. I mean, we, we oh, won over should. there. And then we got the state championship rings, <laughs> which everyone's got on tonight. We're very proud of that. Uh, we put the you tournament probably, of champs. Yeah, you can probably show, the show that. Put, the, yeah, put your ring up here, Jake. And Paul, and if you can, can get that shot of that ring, that's the state championship ring. Paul, get a close up as uh, and then there the it watch. is. And then the watch. And, then, and you want to show them the watch too, uh, Jake? Right, well, the watch, uh, this is a. Uh, Keep both of them on. This is 32 years of history. Uh, the watch is 1983. It's 32 years old. It's on its 14th band. I wear the bands out. And uh, in between 1983 and 2014, uh, Bergen Catholic won 10 more state championships. 
but we didn't get a ring or a watch. We kind of, you know, all of a sudden now we're into it. So that spans 32 years. This watch and this ring is like about four inches. And uh, the coaches got them. Uh, the kids got them. We all got all our right. watch. And they have your name on it. They have BC. And they have their little diamonds on They're the top. Beautiful. Crusaders on one side. Your name is inscribed on the inside. And in the Tournament of Champs, there's a, a tiny band on this side has a little <laughs> bit of a ribbon. I should put my hand. Put your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be part of that. You put your hand up. You make one of those rings. Watch him. Everybody <laughs> took them away. <laughs> That's Being great. Italian, right? So uh, what happens now? You uh, you finished. Uh, the weather's changing. You're still golfing now. Or? They're all golfing. They have tee times tomorrow for a variety of tournaments. I'm playing in a tournament myself at uh, uh, Knickerbocker. Uh, it was today and tomorrow. Um, most of us don't stop. As long as it doesn't snow, and even when it does, we'll go someplace warm and keep playing. Uh, I can't coach them until March 8th, but I certainly can encourage them to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, and when March 8th rolls around 2015, We'll all be back again. Bus rides to Cranberry when it's yeah. cold. Back again. Yeah. Let me ask you real quick. We'll start with Jimmy. Go around. Um, the snow falls. Let's say December first, and the snow goes away. March fifteenth. What do you do between December and March? Um, I'm actually lucky because I live near uh, the PGA Superstore, and you, um, they actually have simulators oh, where you yeah. can hit balls. Yeah. And they actually have a, a good putting green, so you can practice your short game and putt and. Uh, that pretty much uh, keeps me throughout for a couple months, and then uh, when the snow melts, you can uh, get back out. How many course. times you there during a week? Um, well, in the winter, I'm pretty much there probably uh, like four or five times a week. How about you? What do you do uh, when the snow flies and the vortex comes in and we're all bundled up? What do you uh, do to keep your game sharp? Well, I have this net return in my basement where I, I hit balls into all the time to keep my game sharp. In the but basement? Yeah. 300 it's, like, yards. Yeah. 300 it's, yards. It's, good, it's good to keep your swing the same, but like you always like lose that little touch around the green when it gets snowy, and that's like what's most important. So I just I just try and like chip around the house and stuff like that. There's yeah, not chip much around the, around the kitchen, right? Balls you want the wall? It, yeah, especially with this last winter, it was really tough because it was. We even started golf tryouts late, unfortunately, at Cranberry. So. All right. Yeah. All right. I have another question for you. Answer that first question, then I got something else just okay. for you. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. When the bad when the bad weather rolls around, uh, I try to practice as much as I can. Uh, I live nearby a uh, closer range, which is about 12 minutes away in the yep. in the range, and even when it's snowing. I still like to hit balls, <clears throat> and uh, when I have time, I like to uh, actually travel down to uh, somewhere south, Lake Georgia. Uh, my aunt lives there, so I like to stay there with her and uh, just get my game uh, sharp and keep and keep it going. <clears throat> and uh, I know my parents don't like it, but I chip around the house a lot, and I got some <laughs> and I got some wiffle balls. That sometimes I just take full swings in the house. In, in the, the house, house, yeah. Well, the wiffle yeah. ball, though. The yeah. wiffle <laughs> ball, wiffle ball. <laughs> yeah. So you're sitting around on a wiffle ball. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, I'm sorry, I hooked that one. Yeah. Now that 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 bunker we saw, how deep was that bunker? Um, was it was it three feet? Oh no, more than no, that. Yeah. Probably way seven more. Feet. Seven, no, yeah. that one, yeah. the, the one that you saw, that was like seven feet. Yeah. I remember specifically, I went in that bunker and I could not see the green whatsoever. Yeah. How do you get out of a seven foot bunker? Sometimes you got to go sideways or backwards. Sideways, yeah. Go backwards, yeah. right? Yeah, go backwards. You might, you yeah. Actually, if you, you want, lose a shot, there's a video. Uh, there's a famous video of Jack Nicklaus. Uh, I think uh, at Hell Bunker uh, at, at St. Andrews, yeah, it took him. I think it took him four shots to get out, and yep. the lip was only about three feet. So that's just so that just yeah, shows you. I, did it. you hit one of those bunkers? It's right yeah, there. actually, uh, when we were playing when we played at St. Yeah, Andrews, just, every yeah. single one of us dropped the ball in Hell Bunker yeah. and tried to see who could get out. And I don't think anybody got out. Yeah, that's got to be at least that's be. five, well, six. The amazing feet, thing seven. about those walls, they eventually <laughs> deteriorate in time. And a special person known as a sod mason comes, just like a bricklayer, and they rip it all the wall down, and then they put the sod, and they stacks it and stacks mm. it. It's like a professional. That's his job. I, I saw that bunker. We, we, we play around here. You see a bunker. It's a little, maybe a couple inches oh, down yeah. and whatnot. But that, when you get in there, you're right. I guess you have to hit it backwards. You lose a stroke. Yeah. That's it's, exactly it's a stroke right. in there. Did something? you? None of you hit it during the... Uh, during the tournament. Anybody get in a bunker during it? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, oh, not that deep, was it? Uh, actually, I was in, <laughs> you, you, you did it? I was in one that was about five feet high. How'd you, you get out of it? I did get out of it. Backwards, forward, side, how'd you uh, do it? No, I was, I was able to get to the pin. I, I, I was a little bit on the upslope. Bogey, double bogey, I did say bogey. par on that hole. I was oh, proud to say You parred that hole with I that? I did par that hole. I uh, hit it to like, ten, well, I made a putt though. I hit it to like 10 feet. Well, 
So it's like conventional par, I guess. What'd you do, Jimmy? <laughs> Um, I actually no made, lying now. We I, got the I, I made par actually because uh, I actually got very lucky because I purposely like I tried to hit it high and I chunked it and it was a good thing I didn't skull it because it would just fell back in the bunker and I actually made like a 25 foot putt for par. <laughs> we we have to yeah. come up chunk it and skull it. Yeah, skull. How about pick it up and throw it? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be cheating. <laughs> chunk it, pick it up Wait, and throw it. it. Anybody uh, looking? No. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for coming. It was a, a complete circle. You came here in May, and we talked about your program and how successful he was. And we had a ball walking with you, Jake, and, and the youngsters on that hole. That, uh, I think we played it in Emerson. Emerson right. And, we, we, and they, were, they were unbelievable, hitting the ball down the middle. And you talked about this trip to Scotland. And now <laughs> you made the trip, and you've come back and talked about it. And it, it's a lifetime for golfers like these young people here. Who really love the game? It's a uh, it's a dream come true. It's like being in the, uh, the you, you reach the highest pinnacle. That's where golf started, right? That's out there correct. in Scotland, yep. it started out there. So yep. you went back to the birthplace of uh, of of, uh, of, uh, of golf. It's like going to Cooperstown on hollow ground <laughs> yes. in baseball. This is hollow ground, and I think there's very few people that even get a chance to go out there and watch a tournament, you know, walk around and see something. You had the chance to play in it. That is remarkable. When you think about it, you say, wow, that really is remarkable. Sometimes you don't think about it. You're doing, then you say, we did that. We went to Scotland yeah. and St. Andrews and played and played well and won. And you know, the nice thing was that they would come back to the rooms and we would sit around and I would, first day, I would say, uh, well, what do you think? And Stevie Weingraf, who's not here, would say, this is better than I thought it was going to be. This is so great. So then the next day, I would talk to each of them and say, what do you think this time? Oh, it's even better than it was yesterday. <laughs> and it just kept building and building until actually we were coming home July 5th. So to play the old course on July 4th, come home on <laughs> July 5th, and to have uh, these great memories. Uh, we, I, there wasn't one of us that didn't have a great time. Was, was the 19. Open after you come home or before? No, the Open was after we came home, but it was um, next year it's going to be at St. Andrews. Uh, where was it at this year? Uh, uh, Pinehurst. Uh, that was the U.S. Open, the uh, US uh, Open. British Open. Uh, British Open. Uh, uh, was there a Liverpool? Uh, Royal Lake. Yeah, Hoy Lake, Liverpool. That, yeah, I had actually played that back <laughs> in 1995, the first time I went on a trip over there. Uh, that was a great course. That's where Tiger Woods won after his dad had died, and he didn't hit any bunkers, no drivers, and they played at Hoy Lake. But now, as my wife likes to point out, and she's going to see this, when it's a zero and a five, that's when the uh, open is played at St. Andrews. So next year will be 215, <laughs> which is a five. But any time a zero, five, St. Andrews. So they're going to actually watch on TV all the golf course and the holes that everyone plays. So when, they, when you watch that, that tournament next year in, I guess, July or August, it'll be, I think, it'll be in they July. play in August, it'll July. Be in July. You'll be able to say, hey, I was there, I was there, I hit it here, I mm -hmm. hit this way. Yeah. That's amazing. That yeah. really is amazing. Yeah, I want to congratulate <laughs> you. You guys are tremendous. Um, I guess uh, at school, was very proud of you, and they all must have been thinking how great this was, and they'll ask you what was going on, and, and you still got a lot more to do, and you got college coming up, and the coaches yeah. helped a lot. So we want to thank you for coming here mm -hmm. and finishing the big circle that started in May, went through Scotland and ended up back here at WCTV. Well, thanks very much. We just uh, we had a ball. Are you planning to go back? I mean, now that you're the defending champ, there, they there, get the there right is, to go back? There, there is some. We're going to have a meeting in October at school. We're going to talk about it. The people that were running this tournament want to bring more and more teams, and they've asked me to help them out to see if I can get some of the teams from New Jersey to go. And even if only a handful go, um, it's still possibility. It's still out there for well, them. I mean, if I was a golf coach and, and I, someone asked me to take my team to Scotland, where do I sign up and what, what time the plane leave? It's never about the money <laughs> until it's about the money. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could go. We could go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of things you have to think about. Right, we have to you know, coordinate it, but yes, there is a uh, 
there's a 50-50 possibility that we'll go back. That'll be great. Again, That'll not be great. all of the kids, but whoever wants to. That'll be great. Let me yeah. show, a show of hands. <laughs> except you. Except you, Jake. Show of hands. All those who want to go back, raise your hand. <laughs> you and I. Like. <laughs> we'll go. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'd love well, to Well, you go. guys can take the team over there, right? Yeah, we come. Yeah. Yeah. You'd never yeah. want to put a golf club in our hands. No, I'm no. no way. I'll still take it. No I'll way. Watch. Never, never way. you got to say hello to your grandchildren right over. They're probably sleeping. Well, it's right there, John. Which, go, that camera right there. All right. Rick Okay, there you go. Declan nice close Kaylee, up of John. The Finnegans, you know. Sure. The, the, the grandfather, I'm a grandfather, I'm a nonna for them. But they're in my house right now sleeping. I hope you're upstairs sleeping, the two of you, the twins, Declan and Kaylee. Go to sleep. Make sure grandma is, is happy. I got a few more <laughs> minutes before I come home. <laughs> I said hello to my grandchildren, the five girls who should be getting ready to go to sleep. My son has five girls. Wow. And uh, two tw sets of twins, twins, wow. one twins. So Adriana and Isabella, Lena, Livy, and Alexandra. I got them all. Good night, and I'll see you soon. Gentlemen, thank you so very much for coming. We appreciate that you were here. You got an open invitation. You go out there again. You know, you got my number. Come back in on. In May, you know? in May, we'll make that trip again. Yeah, you know? make the trip again. Yeah. We can, we can continue. That was a beautiful day. That was. Oh. Yeah, just coming over to Emerson if you'd like. To, uh, you know, when we're finishing up the season, and just to watch them come in the last hole and talk to us, go to the putting green. You can come over any time. Yeah. Sure, we'll no, have to do excellent. that. We really, we really, yeah, we we'll talked about it a lot. We'll do we really enjoy show. coming over and watching them and shaking our head how good they really are. You, you have yeah. to play the game to realize how good they yeah. really are. Yeah. You, you, you could say they're good until you put a club in the hand and they're take good. 15 <laughs> shots to get up and they do it in four. How do they do it? No, they're it's, good. It's amazing. They're very, very good. 949 wins, 30. Two losses. losses and one tie. Yes, that's correct. That is phenomenal. That's that's fantastic. That's there's fantastic, no, Jake. There's no sport out there that can match that. No, not in even numbers. Close. Well, Hurley's pretty good in basketball. Hurley's <laughs> Hurley from well, Hurley's there. Yeah. yeah. Jeff Jasper's pretty good Jasper, in basketball. Jasper, you're right. But, you're right. But it's the number of losses that's kind of unique. The that's it. They have more wins, but yeah. only 32 losses. I'm a coach in right. 30. Uh, two years. A loss a year. That's a loss a year. Yeah, and you're upset about each one of them. I was. I know every one of them. Too. Too. I do. Jasper they, they should haunt be getting me. close to a thousand, right? He's getting close. Uh, we a should have a more show years. with the two of you when you. Well, when eventually uh, Jeff's going to hang around forever. I think so. He loves what he's doing. Yeah. Thank you. We'll get you guys to go home. We got to go golf and tomorrow. We'll yeah. John and I keep you here all night. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's fantastic. These are remarkable young people, led by a tremendous coach. Next week, we'll have another show. We'll be doing the uh, Mawa Westwood game tomorrow at 6 o'clock, and it'll be running on Saturday and Sunday on a loop. So everybody here at WCTV, hope you enjoy the show. Thank you, and see you tomorrow at Westwood for the big football game. Good night, everybody.